you know that I purposely don't talk about Trump much on these Who? airwaves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I serve, I, I, you know, I reserve Fridays to troll the F out of him. Okay. But there's a lot going on right now. Mm. There's just too much going on. And so since I have you here, you're, yep. you know, kind of a, you know, my de facto, I'm going to put it off on you. Okay, great. Cena wants to talk about this. I don't want to talk about Trump. Oh, God. But it. I think Cena wants to talk about Trump. Yeah. So we're going to talk about Trump. Yeah. So we're talking about the Kurds thing? Is this, is this the team me up here? Hold on. And now. I love the poorly educated. It's time for. Oh, look at my African American over here. Five. Look at him. Look at him. Are you the greatest? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. Five minutes of truth. I'm a very intelligent person. With Karen Hunter. All right, before we get into. The, the serious stuff. Uh, the United States is, is scheduled to hold the G7 summit in 2020. And uh, we just found out, uh, according to White House Chief, Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, that um, the, the, G, the G7 summit, 2020 summit, will be held at Trump National Doral Miami Golf Course and Resort. You gotta be fucking Come kidding. on, Patty! <laughs> Patty! Yep. Uh, he said the Trump family would not be profiting from the event. Really? Bullshit. Really? Uh, and they said he's going to be criticized regardless, so they chose to do it. It's like, are oh, you going to talk about me anyway? We're just going to do it there. The summit's going to be held June 10th through the 12th. All the delegations will stay on campus versus the hotels in the area. Typically, the host nation is responsible for funding the G Summit, the G7 Summit. So, um, but this this is this is really, I, 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 how, do you, how do you do this with a straight face? Like, this is, first, uh, the vice president, has to stay in one of his facilities. The the Navy had to stay in one of his facilities. And now the G7, like this, you, you're you not our country. Your country club is not America's property. This is ridiculous. And let me just give you a little insight into the Doral, uh, National Doral Miami golf course. In 2016, it was sued by a New Jersey insurance executive. His name was Eric Linder. Uh, and he alleged that he was bitten by bed bugs in his room at the resort. And he claimed staff negligence. The suit was settled. Yep, it was settled in 2017, according to court documents. Trump denies that he had bed bugs, but he settled. Fight it. The G7 is is the world's most powerful leaders scheduled to gather during that weekend. Uh, it's the group of seven, which includes Japan, the UK, Germany, Italy, France, Canada, and of course, United States. Uh, that Trump. Do you think he's still going to be president by June 10th? And if he's still president, if he's not president by June 10th, do they still have to hold the summit at his resort? Go, Cena. <laughs> Tell me what you think. I mean, I think that's – has any, can we just stand up and say we're not paying? I'm not paying for it. I don't I'm not wanna, paying yeah, for it. Yeah, I, I would love to do that. Can we, so, we can't do that? Anyone going to back us up on that? Smith will. Smith, you're going to do that? No, I just have a prediction of okay. what's going to go down. What's he's going to try to invite Putin. He's already been putting out feelers. He wants. He's not wow. part of the G7. He wants to turn this back into the G8. Wow. So, my, so my guess is he's going to invite Putin because he's going to be like, "It's my party. I'm going to invite who I want." And then the rest of them, the other six, aren't going to show in protest. And this is a, that's my prediction. Another clear violation of the emoluments clause, right? It's so clear. Is that, that in your almanac? That's in the Constitution. Oh, okay. Can you read it for us? What does it say? The yeah. no, Look. no president. The <laughs> monuments clause. Don't you? I'm going to put you on the hot seat. I told you a seat was hot. You got to get your pen later. Uh, okay. The emoluments uh, clause. So you cannot take any sort of gift. This is why there's all these rules about gifts. You can't if you get like uh, Samantha Powers, this former U.N. ambassador, was regaling us with a story on a podcast that I was listening to where she got in trouble for taking a muffin when she was at a conference because it was not sanctioned by the appropriate channels. She got in trouble for taking a muffin. So it's like this is where we're at now. This is how things happen. But now this administration just is like, well, rules, we don't like them. We're not going to follow them. The Doral uh, Resort is the most – is the worst performing resort in, in all of his properties. It is bankrupt both financially and morally. And it needs help more than ever. And it's got bed bugs, this, apparently. Alleged, it not has, even allegedly. It has bed bugs. It's got bed bugs. I, as a, a, a man married to a Japanese American, I refuse to allow the good Japanese leaders to go and, and get bed bugs. And get bed bugs. Right. We'll okay. probably get it. So. Okay.
I right. hate this man. He, so I, I, if I could just the Kurds think I just jump okay, in. We're gonna get quick. into that. So I think that this thing, you know, I'm pretty good at politics, being able to keep it cool. So let me just you're gonna, for full disclosure, okay. yeah. not only you're an attorney, you're also Persian. Yeah. Uh, Iranian by birth. Yeah. Iranian. Iranian. Yes. Thank okay. you. Yeah. I'm sorry because we're all good. Iran. Yeah. That's why we're so. Ugh, we're Amy so Klobuchar. American. Iran. Iran. Yeah. Iranian. Yes. Iranian. You're Iranian. Ooh, thanks for the role. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm here for you. So go. Tell us what's happening. So as a person that's been watching the Middle East since I was a kid, I also love talking about politics. And I always thought, man, I could always talk to politics about anyone and kind of keep it cool and have a good time and not actually get triggered. And even this whole administration, I know it's kind of crazy to say this, but I actually have kept a level head this entire time. I have not gotten pushed to the point where I feel like I can't go online or I can't do certain things or I can't have a conversation or I feel myself crying or something. But when President Trump pulled out the 2,000 troops, just the small number of troops, the presence that we had in northern Syria that were basically protecting, that were a, a figurative shield for the Kurdish troops that were basically the jailers for ISIS prisoners there, when he did that, I, I, it crossed a line for me that I never thought would happen to me, and it was shocking because I've read about the Kurds for a long time. In the late 80s, during the Iran-Iraq uh, conflict, the United States backed Saddam Hussein. Not only did we back Saddam Hussein, the corn that we grow in Iowa, we were sending to Saddam Hussein. We were literally feeding him from uh, giving subsidies to farmers in America and sending that food to Saddam Hussein. And in the same breath, Saddam Hussein was gassing the Kurds along the Iran-Iraq border, gassing them. One of the biggest genocides that we've seen is in, this is on the level of Bosnia. This is on the level with R Rwanda. This is on the, you know, these are terrible things that we have allowed to happen to the Kurds. Yet, they still, and by the way, these are mostly Christians. These are not Muslims even, and not like it should matter. But if you're out there and you're a conservative and you're like, the Muslims are all bad, blah, 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 they, they don't know anything. They're, these are Christians, okay? And there's a lot of women that are fighting for us that are putting their lives on the line for us. If you care about our troops, if you care about a person that goes into the military and fights for our freedom and is going to die for us, then you got to care about these Kurds. I agree with you. And within 24 hours, sorry to interrupt, but within no. 24 hours, and this is what is really just brings me to uh, just to tears, and I've, I've cried multiple times in the past week. Within 24 hours, two dozen Kurds were killed. Uh, a female politician was pulled out of her car and, and shot in the head. And raped. Yeah, and before, raped. Yeah. This this is beyond, this is an absolute slaughtering. And Mike Pence coming out and saying that there's a, that now that we're gonna rape, we're gonna, we're gonna lift the sanctions and now there's gonna be a ceasefire is too little too late. That is like if the KKK comes in and hangs someone, we're like, well, they're not gonna hang anyone anymore, so don't worry about it, everybody. We've made a deal. They still hung a person. They still murdered. They still did the damage. And this is why we have a lot of domestic issues that are that are big and that are important that we should deal with. We have race relations in this country that matter. But how we handle our foreign policy is how we have a country. There won't be an America that people want to do business with, that people want to travel to, that people want to emigrate to. This is why we are going to lose our – why should Canada back us up? Right. Why should Mexico – why should anyone right. back us up? Right, right. Uh, Thank you for that. Thank no, you for no, 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 because this, this is foundational. All right. And the leader of Turkey said that there is no ceasefire. This is not a ceasefire. He just, he just did that? Yes, oh, today. Fuck. So, so there's that, right? But it, it raises a larger question, and I want to end five minutes of Trump there because I want to have a conversation. God bless the United States. <laughs> An anomalous, anomalous lodestar. <laughs> so bad. Space Force. <laughs>